Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com and to the second and final part of my i7 PC build. Last time I dealt with the processor, the motherboard, the cooler and the memory and also did a successful test boot. This time I'm therefore going to finish things off by fitting the motherboard in the case, sorting out some drives and running some comparative performance tests. Right, as you may recall from the last video, this build is an upgrade of the PC that I used to render my 3D animations, and it's housed in this really solid Cooler Master ATC620C BX1 case. And no, you probably can't buy this anymore, I'm afraid it's from 2003. Anyway, last time I opened up the case so we could do the test boot, could we access the power supply, and now it's time to strip everything out from inside here, and some of these components are, are quite old. These aren't 2003 components, this is 2011. This is a, a Core 2 quad system at the moment, uh, running Windows XP, uh, a Q8300 2.5 gigahertz uh, chip, two um, gigabytes of RAM. So everything's gonna be getting a lot higher spec, roughly four times increase in spec in terms of RAM and hopefully speed of processor as well. So what I need to do is to get on with removing all of the old components, and when we've done that, we'll have a case which is cleared out, just as it would be if you were doing a brand new build. So I'll get on with a bit of component removal. And uh, there we are, the case is cleared out, ready for the new uh, board to go in. We seem to have a strange little thing down here. I think this is actually, this really is a bug, I think. This is a, uh, clearly a fried insect. Looks like the remains of a, of a ladybird, a ladybug has actually ended up with a computer there. You may know that bugs in computers were actually first called that because they were actually insects that got into the works and got all burnt up and, and caused problems. Fortunately, this hasn't caused me any trouble, but it's, it's interesting to find that inside the computer. And I think it does give me a thought that I probably should give the thing a jolly good clean before we do anything else. So I think I'm gonna go and clean this case and then we'll get on with fitting the new components. So, here we are, the case is now uh, lovely and clean. I didn't quite eat my lunch off it, but uh, probably could have done, although there was a slight bit of, bit of gunge left there. There we are, it's now lovely and clean. I should point out I've kept the power supply I was using previously. This is a 400 watt Zalman power supply. If you're building a PC, you'll obviously need a power supply to make it work. And if you're buying a new case, it might come in the case or you might have to buy it separately. But a 400 watt should be fine to run an i7 these days, unless you're gonna fit a large graphics card or a lot of traditional hard drives. Here, I'm using onboard graphics, so the 400 watt power supply will be absolutely fine. And I've also kept the case fan. I thought about changing the case fan, but actually it seems to be a pretty good Coolmaster fan. It works while well. I've cleaned it all up, so that'll be absolutely fine. So, we can now think about fitting the motherboard, and to do that, the first thing we need to do is to fit the uh, I.O. shield, this thing in the back of the case. This came in the motherboard box. If you've got a new case, you won't have one to remove, but in my case, I first need to remove the old shield and then to fit this one. So, let's attempt this most horrible of activities. I'll try and, oh, well, the old one came out very easily. If you've watched my videos building PCs before, you know I hate fitting these things because they never go in easily. And they're bound, if I say it won't, it's bound to work, isn't it? Ah, oh, you see, it's all, I've already jinxed it the wrong way. Get in, you dare we, deary me. Ooh, that was rather straightforward. We've now got that in the back of the PC. Hurrah! We can therefore now take our uh, motherboard and uh, move it into position. Always tricky to get it through, and this will hopefully go in okay. As it does, it'll stick out the back, and uh, all the connectors will be in the right place. That went in remarkably easily. And as with all of these things, the first thing is getting the first screw in, and I wish I'd put it on my magnetic screwdriver before I started that, but I didn't. But anyway, it was just about there, and the first screw will start things off fine and get things all in place. Don't do that too solidly first. So I'll now just put all the motherboard screws in. And uh, there we are, those are all in. A few of the screws actually are all under back here, you might not be able to see all of those, but never mind. They're all in now. So the motherboard is now in our machine. Our screwdriver is rocking around going, strange screwdriver rocking noise in the background. Don't do that screwdriver 
I'm sorry, says the screwdriver, I won't interfere again. Anyway, uh, we now need to do a bit of connection. So we've got things like the fan connector to connect in, and we've got the uh, connectors to pull in here for the front panel. Things like connectors for the power switch, the power LED. I'll connect these by the magic of filmmaking, because you'd never see what was going on as my fingers got in the way. And on a similar basis, I'll connect in the connector for the system fan, which is hiding away all the way at the back of the board there. It didn't want to be filmed, but we've seen the system fan connector is connected. Sneakily, while you weren't watching, I've also connected in some front USB connectors. I've tried to uh, tidy some of these wires because some of you get very concerned if my wires aren't, aren't very neat. I've even tied the wires for the fan. I've connected round the back in here behind the fan and, and between that and the power supply, the, the cooler fan, I've connected in the 12 volt ATX power. I simply can't find an angle to show you that very easily. And finally, I've connected in terms of board connectors, this uh, main power connector the one with all the big cables and colours. Is that going to snap in? I haven't heard the snap yet, but oh, oh it, it has gone in. It's gone in. Oh, yeah, there's a tiny snap there. That's gone in, so the board is now powered. So I think it's high time we start thinking about some drives. Right, the system drive on this PC is going to be a, this, a SanDisk SSD. Yes, I've forsaken Samsung for once. I don't quite know why, I thought I'd just try a, a SanDisk SSD. They're owned by a Western Digital now, so it must be okay. And if we just get in here, you'll see this is one of their uh, X400 drives. So quite a, a decent quality drive with them. some interesting colours on it there. Let's just get it out of its little bag. Anti-static bag, of course, but... Uh, oh, very well sealed anti-static bag. They're not going to get that out by accident. And there we are. Here's our uh, SanDisk uh, X400. This is a 128 gigabyte SSD. That'll be absolutely fine for what this machine needs. Needs, although, although I'm starting with one drive, there will be a second drive going in at some point in the future. You'll see that in a future video. Now, to fit that in the case I've got, I need a means of mounting a 2.5 inch drive. I could just blue tack it in the case. I've done that before, but I thought, no, I'll do things properly. So I bought myself uh, one of uh, these. This is a mounting kit. In fact, it's two mounting kits in the same case. It was one pound more to have two in the case. No one seems to be admitting to actually manufacturing this, but if we look inside and get the thing opened up, or oh, you can hear the metal already, one and uh, two. Two mounting kits there. You only need one of them. This one seems to have the screws, doesn't it? So what we need to do is to take this and we put the SSD onto that. It goes on the that way up it seems. That's a bit sad, isn't it? The sand is bit disappears. So that'll go in now. I'll just screw that together. And uh, there we are. Even in the uh, fast playback, you might have seen a Raider Writer pig's breakfast of that. I like the way sand disc appears in the, in the metal. That's rather nice. So we can now take this and fit it in a three and a half inch bay in the PC. And that bay is actually a uh, under here, there's a nice internal bay in there. This is not a case, it's very easy to show you everything, unfortunately, but this is the thing, it's going to slot in under here like that. And actually, in that one, the top one, there's it going. It's going to fit in like that. There we are. That's how it'll fit in. So I just need to connect some power to it with metallic clangs there. I need a SATA power connector. There's a slight shortage of SATA power connectors on this power supplies loom, so I've got an adapter on that one just to make my life easier with the wiring later on. I obviously need a SATA data cable, or it won't work at all. So put that in too. Push that under there, and then get that out the way. Stop being a naughty wire. And this will hopefully go in the top of there, sliding in like that, that's fine. And it'll just slide into place, and I can now just take a screw. I'm still with you. I've just disappeared to find the screwdriver. And the screwdriver comes in. You may just be able to see it. I'm doing something there. That'll screw in, and that is nice and uh, secure. I think actually, just the one thing will secure that. We really don't need that much more support on that. It's a, in an internal bay. It's an SSD. It's not going anywhere. The screwdriver is making noises again. It's rocking around. I've told you once before, screwdriver, stop doing that. Anyway, we now need to take the SATA data cable and connect it in to the SATA port on the motherboard. There are six SATA ports down here. We need to put this into SATA zero, really, if it's going to be our, our system drive, so we'll do that. I think I can just about get in. I want to work out which way this cable wants to be going in the future. I think it'll go into SATA one 
or SATA zero rather like this. There we are. And now we have that drive fitted. We also, of course, want to have an optical drive, and the optical drive I'm going to use is this one. It's a Sony DVD-RW. It's actually the drive I took out of my main video editing PC a little while ago to fit an M-Disc drive, so it's a perfectly good drive. Um, I don't know how old it is, a few years, I guess. It'll work perfectly well in this PC. So we will take this drive. Here we are, and um, it slots in the front of the machine like this. I'm going to go to this slot here. Goes in like this. And there we are, like that, lines up with the front of the case. And again, we need to make sure it has got access to data, which is the uh, connector here. Fit that one on there. That will go into SATA connector, I think, number one, just above the other one. This is now we, we start to have arguments between the wires, but I'm sure that will go in OK. Go on. Get in there, thank you. That's now in. It of course needs some power, which can come from that SATA thing there. I'll have fun tidying these cables in a second, but for now, let's just get it all in and working. That goes in there. I also, of course, must put some screws in, so let's put a screw into the side of that uh, DVD. And so with the uh, addition of a screw in here, this uh, case only has provision for screws in one side of, of drives. It has sort of clips around the rest. There's, there's one screw in there. We'll put a second screw in a bit lower down in here. Let's get that in there and uh, put that in. There we are. The drive's not going to go anywhere now. And as you can hopefully see, we've now got our uh, DVD drive, optical drive mounted under here, even if it is a bit sulking in the shadows. Now, we've still got a bigger hole left here. I'll come back to that in a second. Also down here, just to point out on this box, there is a, a floppy drive under here, a traditional three and a half inch floppy drive. I've actually left that in for now. It's not connected to anything. It can't be connected to anything. There's no floppy connector on, on a modern motherboard. But I have a cunning plan for the future when I'm going to be replacing this with something which is a bit like the modern version of a floppy disk. And I'll leave you to think about what that might be, but you'll be seeing that in a future video. But uh, for now, the thing I do want to address before we finish off this build is what's going in here. What are we going to fill in that hole? So, as you've just seen, what I'm going to do finally on this build is to fit some front USB ports. And I bought this bracket from CSL, which is very like the anchor bracket I fitted to the front of my other PC recently. Couldn't get one of those. Again, if I could get this, which is very similar, I think, if we get it out, it uh, doesn't lose the screws there. This is a metal bracket. Very, very nice product. This absolutely solid. And so that's going to go on the front of the PC, and this will connect to the motherboard. But you might be thinking, this is smaller than the hole on the front of your PC, Chris, and it is. And so I've also got, let's clear those out of the way, I've also got one of these. Back to StarTech. You always have to use something from StarTech in a build. I think it's kind of the law. And uh, this is an adapter from a five and a quarter to a three and a half inch bay. So if we open this thing up, if we try to open this thing up, it doesn't want to open up. There we are. Open it up. And you'll see in here, I've got exactly as I just said, this bracket and a couple of mounting screws as well. And I must admit, for a StarTech product, I'm not terribly impressed with this. It has the problem that you'll find with a great many bay adapters these days. It's made fully out of plastic, and the screws are self-tapping into that plastic to fit it, which really is not, the, not ideal. But uh, anyway, it'll work for us. So what I need to do is to take that, and we can take our uh, CSL thing, and it'll fit in, I think, like that, and that'll work quite nicely on the front of the machine. So I'll get in and put some screws into that. And I think that's about as good as it's going to get. I mentioned the uh, plastic things. It's already snapped in one place here, just putting uh, this thing in. It is, I think, good and solid because of the way the forces work on it. But uh, really, if I could get a metal bracket for this, I would, but unfortunately, I can't. Anyway, it's now time to fit this into the PC. So we take this to the PC. It's going to go in the front here. The cable goes all the way through. There we are, out the way there. And this will push in, hopefully, and line up with the front. You'll then lose sight of it, I'm sure. I will put in the uh, 
horrible self-tapping screws. And there we are. And with the cable connected to a USB 3 header on the motherboard, we now have two USB 3 ports on the front of this PC. And so, with the wiring as a tidy as I think it's reasonably going to get, there isn't a wiring system in this case, but I've got all the wiring nicely secure now at least, so that looks pretty good. I think our build is effectively at an end. I just need to uh, take the case and put the case on, and this is a swine of a case to get on. It's absolutely the most difficult case I've ever put together. But, uh, so I'll do that quietly off camera. I'll get the case on here. I'll finish this off and uh, there we are. We have finished building or at least rebuilding this PC to be an i7. With my render box rebuild complete, I've now successfully installed Windows 7 and have run a test rendering a piece of animation. Specifically, I've rendered this shot rotating around the Custard Pie single board computer featured in my opening titles, in which it took exactly 9 hours or 540 minutes to render on my previous 2.5GHz Core 2 Quad Q8300. But rendered on my new i7-6700T, it output in 265 minutes or about 49% of the time. So, at the end of this rebuild, I've ended up with a system that's almost exactly twice as fast. During the test, I have of course been monitoring power usage and the temperature of the processor. And here I can report that the entire i7 system is idling at about 45 watts, and is consuming around 70 watts while rendering, or in other words, at full load. These figures compare to an idle of about 65 watts and a load of about 100 watts for the previous Core 2 Quad Q8300. And so, as we can see, there's a notable energy saving. Indeed, taking into account the increased render speed, my watts consumed per animation frame rendered has been cut by about two thirds. When it comes to CPU temperatures, both systems idled at around 24 degrees and registered a maximum full load CPU core temperature of 54 and 53 degrees. This means that my new system is not running any hotter than the old one, although I might try and improve its cooling in the future and get its low temperature below 50. But for now, that's it. That's the end of the build, and I hope you've enjoyed watching me taking my rendering PC and making it twice as fast. If you have enjoyed it, of course, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.